Good afternoon. Thank you for coming to listen to my speech concerning public speaking. And um, I, I really appreciate you attending today. I, I, I'm really glad you could be here. Do you believe me? Do you believe anything I just said? Probably not. The reason you don't is because my body language didn't match what I was saying. If I came into the room and said, Good afternoon, how are you doing? I'm so glad that you can make it. How much better of a presentation is that? I'm here today to talk about body language and communicating non-verbally. Um, the three topics I wish to point out is how to communicate without speaking, how non-verbal communication can affect your life and your career, and how to communicate effectively, give you tips on how to do that. 7% of communication is spoken. The other 93% is body language, your voice tone, and gestures. Here, I'm holding my hands together. I am self-soothing because obviously I'm nervous. <laughs> um, normally, it's there are things that are tells. Uh, with political parties, they always want the upper hand. The phrase came from handshaking. The person on top is the person with the upper hand. The person underneath is the one that becomes more submissive. If you're shaking your hand with someone, you want to shake vertically so that you're equal partners in the handshake. Um, political parties, uh, presidents of foreign nations will actually fight over who gets the upper hand. You can see it in video. Everybody wants to be that one that's on top. Um, posture is also another thing. Hillary Clinton, if you watched when she, when Bill Clinton first became president, she's very shy, her shoulders are slumped. That is not the same person we see today. The person we see today is standing tall, her voice is strong, there's no mildness, there's no meekness. She became senator for a reason, and it wasn't because she was cowering behind Bill Clinton as she did back in the 90s. Um, also, with political, uh, parties, the last one through the door is the one in charge. The first person through the door is the submissive one. So you will always see presidents of foreign nations actually guiding the other person in the door if they are able to do so. Uh, sometimes they'll actually get into a tuffle, stu a scuffle over top of it. Um, one will put the, their hand on the other's back, the other one will come in and do the same thing because nobody wants to be the first one through the door. It's very um, interesting, and people that study body language um, take norming into effect. Norming is the normal for that person. So they'll watch presidents and political figures and actors and actresses, and they'll watch what their normal response is in daily life. If they're veering from that, that's where body language is coming out. Um, and it will deceive you. Paris Hilton, um, when she was put in prison, she uh, did something completely out of her norm. Normally she's all wild and crazy and here I am, look at me. When she came out of prison, she held her hands in front of her body like she was an innocent schoolgirl. Not like her, she had somebody coaching her, obviously. Britney Spears, another one. Um, normally at the beginning of her career she was very open, and hey, look at me, all about me. She got into trouble, she started wearing dark glasses. If you can see the person's eyes, you can see into their soul. And that's how, that's why all the celebrities wear these dark glasses. They don't want you to know them. They wanna be, hey, look at me, but I don't want you to know me. Um, next, I'll talk about how it can affect your life and career. So, say I gave this great speech. It was the most wonderful speech you ever heard. You are ready to ask questions, and I say to you, all right, I'm open for questions. Do you have any? I have now crossed my hands, closed myself off, and stepped back from you. Do you feel welcome? Do you feel like you want to ask questions? But if I said the same way, I, thank you very much for listening to May Day. Who has questions? I'm opening myself up to you and allowing you to come in and ask me whatever you want and willing to share that information with you. Police enforcement, uh, police 
law enforcement also use body language detections. Um, if someone is clapping their hands, they're getting ready for a fight. Um, not just ha clapping hands out of being happy, clapping hands, walking around, doing whatever. They're getting the blood flow, going to their hands, and they're ready to fight you. Um, also, poker players. That's a big one. Poker players and tells. They, you know, everybody has twitches and things like that that they can see. Um, you form opinions of people in the first couple of seconds that you meet them. Even before they say a word, you formed your opinion. And that's all body language. Next, I will tell you about tips and transitions. How to do better in your body language. Um, make sure that you stand it tall. Show that you're important. Shoulders back. Genuine smile. Act like you're happy to meet them. Eye contact. Also very important. All these things are good in your professional life and when you're meeting people for the first time. Let them know that you're here, you're truthful. If you stand with your hands behind your back, you're open. You're willing to give. If you cross your hands, you're closed. You're, you're done. This is nervousness. This is insecurity. There are many, many, many tells. If I sit in a chair and my top leg is away from you, I'm closed off from you. If I sit in a chair and I'm focused towards you, I'm paying attention. I'm engaged. Of course, that's not true if you've been sitting for 30 minutes. Then you just want to be comfortable. Um, slow head nod. Yeah, I understand. I'm, in, I'm understanding what you say. I'm with you. Fast head nod. Hurry up. <laughs> Are you done yet? <laughs> um, palms up is honesty. Uh, steeping of your hands is thoughtfulness. Um, mirroring is a great thing. You mirror the people that are listening to you and you mirror your audience. You're connecting with them. You're creating a rapport. Um, if you are adjusting, scratching, itching, you're nervous. If you're touching your nose, you're lying. Um, there's so many gestures that you don't think about that people actually study. If you have your head held high like this, you're arrogant. If you have your head down, you're, it's negative. It's criticism. And these are the things that body language experts study. And these are the things that you pick up on in a person, whether you are paying attention or not. You know that this person is not being truthful or you, you just don't agree with the way that their body is telling you what you um, are trying to say. Uh, I will sum it up by letting you know that there are many, many, many things that are tells in a body. If you want to be defensive, if you want to be these things, then you show these. But it's an inner thing. It's not what you want to portray outside. What you want to portray outside always is confidence. And look that person in the eye. Show that genuine and smile. And remember, Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, what you can do speaks so loud, I cannot hear what you say. Thank you.